Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, AEW are reportedly extremely concerned about COVID-19 affecting upcoming shows. WWE allegedly planned on having Karrion Cross lose again on Raw this week. There was a huge turn on last night's NXT, leading to a big takeover match. And it's been confirmed Samoa Joe will return to the wrestling ring at TakeOver. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. All right. Just when you thought we were out of the woods, just when you thought we would oh. never have to deal with the, the big bad virus, Cyrus the virus, affecting wrestling shows in a negative way again, here we are. Delta variant is doing its thing currently in the United States, unfortunately. Uh, the CDC reintroduced mask guidelines for people who are indoors, advising you to wear a mask when you're inside, even if you've been fully vaccinated yesterday. And now we have a report here from uh, Cassidy Haynes of Bodyslam.net, who's been on top of a lot of things yeah. recently uh, regarding AEW and their kind of reaction to all of this. According to him, and this is a direct quote, uh, the company are extremely concerned by what's going on and have began internal discussions on what they might need to do if restrictions come back into play. Uh, returning to Daly's place in Jacksonville, which was of course AEW's home, the bulk of the pandemic is indeed on the table. So two shows in particular are, are causing concern here and understandably so when you learn what these shows are. Yeah. Uh, the first one is All Out, the big pay-per-view in Chicago, which might end up having CM Punk on it if he ends up signing. Understandably, if that has to get moved to Daly's place, not good. And also, Arthur Ashe Stadium, the big New York City show, is said to be causing particular concern as well. Um, they sold something like 16,000 tickets for that. It's another huge show, the, the Dynamite Grand Slam event for them. So, you know, when you're looking at that and the standard rank and file episode of Dynamite, obviously you're going to think, oh, that would not be good. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot going on. We've got a quote here from, from Cassidy's article uh, saying, this is from a source, saying, ultimately, Tony has to make a decision about what is right for the talent, staff, and especially the fans, which is dead right. Um, it's a fluid situation. It's a disappointing situation. Um, but ultimately, when you look at that graph and you see the numbers kind of creeping up again, things have to be, you know, concerns have to be raised and everything else. So. I'm glad to learn that AEW is taking steps already to plan for something that might happen just in case it does. But it still sucks, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's awful news to wake up to. It's not exactly surprising like you say, Andy. I mean, you just want an example if you're over there in the States. Look at what's happened here in England with the Delta variant. It's just yeah. torn through everyone. And yes, I know a lot of people are vaccinated or on their way to getting fully vaccinated. But let's not forget in, in the midst of all this, just because you're vaccinated, it doesn't mean you're just immune, like you're Superman yeah. with bullets bouncing off you. I saw a great analogy today saying, well, it's like saying, oh, well, how come if I got vaccinated, I can still get ill? Well, it's like getting, you know, a, a hurty chest after being shot in it because you're wearing body armor. It only protects you to a certain That's extent. A and not only that, but the developing variants, who knows what could happen next? Look, I'm not going to get into a big political discussion about COVID. I'll leave that to the comment section. But like you say, Andy, it is uh, it is reassuring that AEW are taking these steps. They shouldn't just be blindly carrying on like, well, that's that sort of thing. We'll keep an eye on it. We hope, you know, obviously that uh, the vaccines and, and then things like that can, can aid in this. But uh, understandable if, if plans have to change as a result of it all. But yeah, go on. Wear a mask, get vaccinated. Really, really easy and straightforward. All right, let's talk a little bit about Carry and Cross. He won on Monday. I wasn't here, but I've caught up on it all. He got fed Keith Lee, poor bastard. Uh, but apparently, according to no crap, just Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, uh, the original plan was to have the NXT champion lose again on this week's Raw. And the reason behind uh, that not actually happening uh, was Jeff Hardy uh, tested positive for COVID. He was taken off the show. They put Keith Lee in, in his place and just buried him a little bit more. It's part of a bigger storyline. We all sort of knew that. But even so, it's maddening for people in NXT and it's jaw-dropping for casual fans like you and I, Andy, that they think this is a good idea for someone like Karrion Cross. 
Yeah, it blows my mind that, that they could possibly think that introducing a guy with two consecutive losses to a guy who just lost to Veer, by the way, uh, on main event yeah. is a good way to push and promote somebody who was previously undefeated. It's um, Look, I, I, you can get down a hole with this WWE booking stuff, but I think the important thing to remember sometimes, and I say this quite often, is that Vince McMahon isn't trying to book a wrestling promotion, he's trying to book a content company. So you, we, we can point at these things and rightly, I believe, say that that's crap booking but he doesn't care at the end of the day uh, and it's not going to change in Nick Khan's words we don't use that word around here that word being wrestling so uh yeah I mean they can't they can't book for a crap but they're not trying to uh but yeah I mean I, I mean the question that comes into my mind now is what do they think of Keith Lee if this guy was being oh, set God. up for two consecutive losses and then Lee came in and ate defeat as well but <laughs> Do you, want to know my cons- do you want to know my conspiracy theory about this, Andy? You know, we're always yes. talking about the, the Monday Night Raw scripts being ripped up and changed at the last second. I think it's all got a bit of a muddle. It's, you know, 5 2 the, before the show starts, and they're getting all the scripts together, and someone's mixed the papers up, and the booking of Reginald has been mixed up with a book for <laughs> Carrying Cross, because given the title and having beat everybody is what Reginald's apparently doing, whilst Carrying Cross gets beaten in under two minutes by Jeff Hardy. Bonkers. I would like to see Karrion Cross try to do some of those flips, admittedly. Oh, that would be yeah. good. That would be good entertainment. Oh. Keith Lee could probably do them if he was put in that <laughs> yeah. role. Because he's ridiculously agile. But we're gonna move on. Uh, we're gonna stop talking about Karrion Cross's crap ass booking. Uh, and instead, we're gonna move over to last night's episode of NXT. The biggest news story coming out of that is uh, the the turn. Kyrie Sane turning on Raquel Gonzalez. Uh, there was a big in-ring promo. They made a whole deal about it. Kai was particularly good uh, in all of this. Hyping her partner up, her longtime ally up, saying she's the best woman, uh, women's wrestler in NXT history, name dropping Charlotte Flair, Asuka, a bunch of other people. She's better than them all. Um, but the key line for me was, for as long as I'm by Raquel's side, she will never lose the belt. And a minute later, she wasn't by Raquel's side. Uh, Dakota Kai kicked her down, turned on her ally, you'd imagine that this is a Gonzalez face turn, posed with the belt, and now the match is scheduled for TakeOver 36 on the 22nd of August, that's SummerSlam weekend. Uh, Like you said on the the pre-chat we had before coming, on the air, we're not on the air, before recording here, Uh, something a lot of people saw coming. But that's not always a bad thing, is it? No, exactly. I think I think this is something that Raquel Gonzalez needs as well. Been iffy uh, having her as champion. So I think it's fair to say. I think most NXT fans would admit that. Despite how brilliant and dominant she has been, she needs to work across someone like Dakota Kai, uh, who's just sensational and arguably deserves the belt for what she's done in NXT over the last few years. I probably would anticipate her, her title retention for Raquel Gonzalez unless she's yeah. been moved up to the main roster. But yeah, everyone can see it coming. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's the best story they can do uh, in that women's division for the world title. And yeah, just a wonderful, you know, setup, like you say, Andy, of like, as long as you've got me by your side, you're untouchable. Psych! Base. That's just that, 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 that entire segment. Uh, shrunk down to three seconds effectively but very yeah. very excited to see where they go next with this and it wasn't the only match added to take over uh, on last night's NXT uh, we sort of already knew this in advance they taped a couple of the shows because they're on sci-fi because of the Olympics um, it is going to be Samoa Joe versus a very dominant unstoppable champion some might say NXT champion Gary and Cross Samoa Joe will return to the wrestling ring uh, his last match was back in February of 2020 uh, but William Regal a very pissed off William Regal uh, gave in uh, gave Joe what he wanted Joe resigned as a sort of behind the scenes official figure got a pro- properly signed as a wrestler and yes was confirmed as uh, Karrion Cross's opponent for the 22nd of August TakeOver 36 they flip reversed it of course Summer Slams on the Saturday TakeOver's on the Sunday it's going to be a great weekend Andy yeah it is it is indeed uh, good stuff going on across the board here Uh, I think uh, SummerSlam in particular is shaping up to be just like a WrestleMania level show, isn't it? With all the the Cena's and your Goldberg's and everyone else. I know everyone doesn't like Uncle Bill, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's heating up at the right time. Let's just hope that now that we've got wrestling back and everything's starting to look exciting and everything else, that a global bastard doesn't rob all of that that away from us. Global bastard. Uh, right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture WWE, of course, you want to get in touch with us. Senor Benja starts us off today. He says, Buenos dias, hashtag this is the news. 
since the expected debuts of Brian and Punk are so close and the tag division is hit and great in AEW, uh, can you see both of them debuting as a tag team and going for the tag belts? An interesting question, this Andy. We get getting asked this quite a lot. I, I, yeah. I, I could, would not see this coming. I'll give them that. Yeah, I wouldn't go for that personally. I just think you're leaving so much money on, immediate money on the table as well, that you could be capitalizing yeah. on the singles wrestlers. I think that's what the real appeal is. Uh, I, I, I think that if you put them together in the tag division, it would certainly be uh, a show of faith in that division. Like, hey, look how seriously we're taking this. Our two biggest stars, and they would be their two biggest stars if they came in, uh, are in the tag division. Um, but no, it's got to be singles runs for me. Uh, maybe you could do, if you want to do a tag team with, thing with them, wait until the initial buzz and everything has worn off. Maybe a couple of years down the line. But for now, let's go solo, baby. Just, I just thought I completely agree with you, Andy, there, Andy. Obviously, go and do single stuff with them. You can do tag stuff whenever you want. Them versus the Young Bucks is money now or in five years' time, let's be perfectly honest. I was trying to think of a name for them then. And I'm like, okay, Punk. We all know what Punk's all about. And then you've got Vegan Daniel Bryan. Cult of Broccoli? Just a thought. <laughs> just thought. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, oh, good no. to be back. Second question today comes from James, a.k.a. Chunk, on Twitter. Uh, Chunky Boy James, great Twitter handle, that, James. Excellent. Uh, says, do, you, uh, do you see Matt Cardona interfering in the Jericho versus Gage match on Dynamite, thus ensuring Jericho wins, but also furthering his feud with Nick Gage? I've been out of the loop recently, but I did not miss the reaction to uh, <laughs> Matt Cardona over the weekend, Andy. <laughs> Matt Cardona did a tremendous job against Nick Gage for GCW. It was a great match and something... Look, if you've got the stomach for deathmatch wrestling, not everyone does if you don't like it, fair enough. But if you're, you know, if you're into that kind of thing and you see that match, it was tremendous. Um, as far as, like, an interference goes, I think that the alignments are a little bit too messed up for that to happen. Just because in GCW, Cardona is, like, the alpha heel... Nick Gage is the folk hero, he's the guy, he's that promotion's icon. Whereas in this storyline, at least in the match with Jericho, Nick Gage will be playing the heel. So it's a little bit screwed up and I don't think they would go for it. However, I will say that this particular interference did pop into my head the other day as well. So I wouldn't be 100% surprised if it did happen. Yeah, very intrigued to see how that goes down. That's tonight, isn't it? That's Fight for the Fallen, of course. It is. It yeah, is. my days are all over the place. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> but I think you can also get around it by having a good back and forth contest with Gage and Jericho. And then Jericho defeats him. And Gage, the nice bloke that he is, goes to, you know, shake his hand, admit defeat. MJF turns on his own hired gun. Your storyline's right there as well. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Matt Cardona shows up tonight. And we'll talk a little bit more about him in a second. Finally, though, uh, final question today comes from Alex Bruegel. I hope I got your surname right there, Alex. I probably butchered it. Uh, he says, as I'm listening to This Is The News from today, I will be on my way to AEW Fight The Fallen. It will be my first live show. Any advice for a first-time fan? Just treat it like a con like a rock concert or, or, or a comedy gig or whatever else you would go to. I think, like... A lot of people get hung up on what, how they should react at wrestling shows. And we see it online, people going, ah, you're too quiet, you're too loud, you're rebelling, all this. Screw all that shit, go there. I swore, sorry editor, <laughs> screw all of that. Nicholas is gonna be pissed. <laughs> sorry, Nicholas. Uh, just go with the flow, like react organically, express yourself how you're feeling in the moment. Don't worry about like people looking down on you or anything like that. If you wanna be loud and everyone else is being loud, be loud. If you don't want to be loud, if you want to just sit there and take in the show, be quiet. Just enjoy it. Have fun. And uh, man, that's a really great card to go to for your first show as oh. well. I'm pretty jealous of that, to what be honest. Treat. Yeah, I think Andy summarized this best beforehand as well. <laughs> don't be a dick. Really easy <laughs> advice, but good stuff. I yeah. would say, because I've been caught out on this on many a wrestling show, pace yourself with a drink. Whether it's alcoholic or not, just pace yourself because once you break that seal, you do not want to be there oh, going, yeah. oh, oh, right, we're half an hour before the main event. What Do I go now? Do I, do I? You don't want to miss anything, especially at a show like Fight for the Fallen. And also, make a sign if you're on your way down, well, unless you're driving. Don't, don't do it if you're driving a car right now, but <laughs> if someone else is driving or you're on another form of transport, make a big sign. Make a big Simon Miller sign. Put big Simon, give this an up sign because <laughs> I always love spotting them. So, uh, Or a big picture of me and Andy's heads. Either there or. But yeah, just enjoy yourself. Uh, uh, and like Andy said, don't be a deck. Uh, right, final thing to wrap up today. Today's and finally. I mentioned Matt Cardona before. I want to give him a, another nod because, yes, he is the new GCW World Champion. And Andy, you've probably seen this. 
It's taking the belt to Disneyland. <laughs> it's been a wild week for that championship belt. I mean, what a journey it's been on. <laughs> It's a great, this is a great storyline. It's so good. The, Matt Cardona and GCW have done such a great job of presenting him as just the opposite of what that company is. It, it, it's so well done. And uh, I honestly think this is one of the best things in wrestling at the moment. Shout outs to Matt Cardona. He's crushing it. This, this rules. Yeah, it looks like him and uh, Chelsea Green having a lovely time there. And of course, as we all know, is it Mickey Mouse and DK all day as well? So that'll be very interesting <laughs> to see how this plays out going forward. Let us know your thoughts on that and all today's news stories in the comment <laughs> section down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And subscribe to What Cult Wrestling on either iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Myself and the Daddy Boys reviewing NXT and previewing AEW Dynamite Fight for the Fallen a little bit later on. Plus, you can let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at What Culture WWE. Watch there, follow both of us. You can follow Andy Murray at... You can follow me at Andy H. Murray and the H today stands for, hey, rest in peace to Joey Jordison. Uh, I know this is a wrestling channel, but there's a huge crossover between wrestling fans and metal fans. And I know a lot of people watching this Slipknot will have been a very important band and maybe still are uh, for a lot of them, myself included. So really sad news overnight. 46 years old is no age at all. No. And uh, it sucks. Rest in peace, Joey. Yeah, awful news. Uh, rest in peace. Thoughts go out to his friends and family, of course. Terrible thing to wake up to this morning. You're right there, Andy. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Adam Will. We'll follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks, Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you soon.